post-holiday doldrums have hit me like they always do after all the like rush and hurry and hustle and bustle and all the things to get ready for the Christmas holiday you know you're just there's so much that goes into it right and then when it's all over and said and done and all the presents are opened and all the family is no longer getting together and you're not having all that family time and those shared moments and all that great stuff when it's all said and done i always get down doldrums mm, malaise sadness and it's gloomy today which doesn't help at all and so i just had a down day i am trying to force myself to go work out I have not wanted to work out all day long. I've wanted to just wallow in my sadness, but I'm going to make myself after this because I just told you that I was gonna make myself, so now I have to. Um, but so, uh, the year is almost over. It's coming to an end. And I, in a past live, talked about how my word that I chose on like January 2nd was when I think I had really finalized that it was my word for the year was fearless and that, you know, I was going to choose a year or a word for the year that I wanted to work on and, um, you know, wanted to become and wanted to be. And so it was the perfect word for 2020. I mean, if I had known what was coming, it was the perfect word. I had no idea it was coming. <laughs> And that was how it was cool because, you know, I asked God to help me choose a word. So I, you know, it's going to be January 1, any minute, it feels like. And so I've been wondering about my word and praying about my word and what's it going to be. And one of the ways I had finalized that that was my word um, last year was that I had seen a sweatshirt that had fearless written on it um, really big red letters and so I bought the sweatshirt and I was like that's my word and so what's funny is I've been looking in my closet crazy <laughs> for my word right and so um the shirt that I had I had thought about was this one powerful girl and then when I was trying to pull that out this one actually fell out which said power 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 and what was interesting is like I was like power as my word like no I don't think that's a word for you missy do you even know what power means and so I actually looked up powerful and what was interesting is when I put in powerful it said to have power to have strength that was all and I was like oh okay that word is not that intimidating um you know that's that's not a terrible word choice but originally I was like I felt like oh, that seems kind of arrogant or, you know, that's too much to ask for, right? And um, right before I got on here, uh, my kids were all kind of acting up. Uh, they, we had a little bit of snow earlier and they played outside a lot. And so now they're tired and they're crabby. And, you know, today's the down day. It's the boring day. All the fun's over. It's dreary, you know. So they kind of feel, I think, probably the way I do. And I was like, I'm not even powerful as a mom. I can't even, like, get my kids to stop fighting. Um, and so I had looked up the word power in the Bible. Guess how many times the word power is in the Bible? 335. I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm kind of warming up to this word now. 355 times? Obviously, that is a word that God thinks is important. If he put it in his word so many times, if you, in the Bible, it's there over and over and over again. And so Luke 24, 49, I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. It's like, oh, well, that's good. I want to be clothed with power. But I still don't even feel like I know what power means. Even after I kind of tried to research it a little more on definitions and stuff. And so, but one of the, the verses that had come to me that's a great one with power in it over and over again is Ephesians uh, 3, 14 is where I'll start. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. I already like that already since 
This is my year of kneeling in prayer all the time. So for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit. So power's coming through his spirit. That's, that's the, you know, I'm really liking this word now. <laughs> His, okay, wait, 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 I'm going to go back down. See, this is why I don't chitter-chatter between my Bible verse, because it's just good on its own. It doesn't need any commentary. Okay, so I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It didn't count how many times it says power, but it's a lot. And this is a really, really good verse. I mean, right? Right? How do I not have every word of that memorized? Because see, for some reason, I always focused on the last part, on the 20, on, you know, immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. But the whole thing is really golden. I should really memorize that, even if I don't choose power as my word. Um, because I want, I guess, you know, I'm asking for like this big, like, whoa, it has to be my word. Because that's how it was last time. But I am leaning toward this. And the more I saw how many times power is in the Bible, yeah, right? And it's all about his spirit in me. It's not like I'm going to have power. He has power at work in me, right? I was talking to somebody about the Holy Spirit and back in. So yeah, my first verse was about the Holy Spirit coming down in power on Pentecost. And that was when, boom, you know, Jesus said, I'm giving you something. I'm, I need to leave because I'm leaving something better for you. You know, that the Holy, like Jesus said that. So like the Holy Spirit's really important. And so when I looked back into the Old Testament of the Holy Spirit, and, and, and one of my sermons I was listening to, they mentioned it as well. It said that, that the Holy Spirit put on Gideon like a glove, that he clothed himself with Gideon like a glove. It's kind of a tongue twister. But so... That's the Holy Spirit inside of us. I, I actually, I wanted to use like a glove, you know, illustration because that's pretty cool. <laughs> but like, that's what I want, right? I want the Holy Spirit inside of me in power, being able to move me. Yeah, that's what I want. Right? Because it's not up to me. I don't have any power. Like I already said, I'm, I'm not, I don't even have any Mm, good power skills with my kids. So Lord Jesus, we ask you to help all of us find a word that we need to work on in the days ahead. Um, may power be for someone if it's not for me, but Lord, either way, as your saints, please let your Holy Spirit be inside of us and, and give us power. However you want us to have that or use it or do with it or what. Either way, Lord, I want to be ready and willing to whatever and however the Holy Spirit wants to use me. And in your name we ask and pray. Amen.